Don't you guys just love fall? I know I do. One of the best things about fall is all of the pumpkins. But you know what's not so great about fall? A rotten pumpkin. Today, we're gonna play a game where you have to try to identify a rotten pumpkin from a good pumpkin. The rules are simple. I'll give you the name of a Bible character, then I'll show you three pumpkins with facts about that Bible character. Two of these facts will be true, but one will not be. That's the rotten pumpkin. All you have to do is hold up the number of fingers for the pumpkin you think is rotten. One, two, or three. Easy enough, right? All right, let's go. Our first Bible character is King David. Now, which of these is not true about King David? One, David killed a giant. Two, David was Israel's first king. Three, David was a shepherd. Remember, hold up one, two, or three fingers based on which pumpkin you think is not telling the truth. Okay, time's up. Who is holding up two fingers? You're correct. King David was Israel's second king. Good job. Let's try another. Our next Bible character is Samson. Now, which of these is not true about Samson? One, Samson was very weak. Two, Samson had long hair. Three, Samson killed a lion. Okay, time to get those fingers up. Which pumpkin do you think is not telling the truth? Time's up. Who's holding up two fingers? You should be holding up one because Samson was very strong. Let's do another one. Rahab is our next Bible character. Now, which of these is not true about Rahab? One, Rahab was from Jericho. Two, Rahab helped the Israelite spies. Three, Rahab hung a bird cage from her window. All right, it's time to decide. Which pumpkin do you think is not telling the truth? Time's up. Who is holding up three fingers? You are correct. Rahab actually tied a scarlet rope in her window. Let's try another. Peter is our next Bible character. Now, which of these is not true about Peter? One, Peter walked on water. Two, Peter lied about knowing Jesus. Three, Peter was a tax collector. So what do you think? Which of these pumpkins is not telling the truth? Time's up. Who is holding up three fingers? You're correct. Peter was actually a fisherman. Good job. Jonah is our next Bible character. Now, which of these is not true about Jonah? One, Jonah was swallowed by a fish. Two, Jonah spent five days in a fish's belly. Three, Jonah went to Nineveh. So what do you think? Which of these pumpkins is not telling the truth? That's it, time is up. Who's holding up two fingers? You are correct. Jonah was actually in the fish's belly for three days. That's still a long time. Eve is our next Bible character. Now, which of these is not true about Eve? One, Eve was Adam's daughter. Two, Eve was the first woman to ever live. Three, Eve was Abel's mother. So what do you think? Which of these pumpkins is not telling the truth? Time's up. Who is holding up three fingers? You should be holding up only one. Eve was actually Adam's wife. Esther is our next Bible character. Now, which of these is not true about Esther? One, Esther was a queen. Two, Esther was a Jew. Three, Esther was married to Haman. So what do you think? Which of these pumpkins is not telling the truth? Time's up. Who is holding up three fingers? 
You are correct. Esther was actually married to King Xerxes. Let's try one last question. Noah is our final Bible character. Now, which of these is not true about Noah? One, Noah built an ark. Two, Noah painted a rainbow on the ark. Three, Noah had three sons. Which of these pumpkins is not telling the truth? Time's up. Who's holding up two fingers? You are correct. God actually put a rainbow in the sky when Noah came out of the ark. Great job, everyone. Greetings and happy Sabbath, friends. Welcome back to Kids Worship. Today we open our Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 1 to be specific. We're going to be hearing a special message that the Holy Spirit gave to Paul. Paul wanted the believers in Jesus in Corinth to understand that it was super important to have unity in Christ. From the beginning of time when evil infected our world through the temptation of the first people created by God, Satan has been causing disunity, which is quite the opposite of unity. So what exactly is disunity anyway? Well, in a nutshell, disunity means not agreeing with one another and even arguing about that disagreement with one another. That's pretty sad, isn't it? I mean, it does feel like there's a lot of that going on these days, too. It appears that disunity is a big problem still today. You know, Paul wanted the believers to stop disagreeing and arguing with one another. In fact, the Bible says Paul begged them to stop disagreeing. They were separating themselves into these separate groups, thinking that what they believed in was better according to well, who their teacher was. And they were bragging about their groups as being better. As children of God's kingdom, there is one thing that's supposed to keep us all together in agreement, in unity. We need to keep our eyes fixed on the one true person that has the same message and the same gift for all people, Jesus Christ. As believers in Jesus Christ, we all belong. And for this, we should all be grateful. Today, we're going to be spending time figuring out what it means to be in agreement with one another as members of God's family. First, let's pray. Father God, thank you for this beautiful day that you set aside so long ago so we could remember you as our creator. Father, we pray that you will be with us as we open your word and study the message that Paul wrote to the Corinthians about being unified in Christ. So be with us, teach us, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Come along, let's go have some fun. Hey kids, do you know this next song? I think it goes something like this. Give me hot sauce for my tacos. Oh, no, not that one. Oh, I'm sorry. How about give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Do you know this one? Why don't we sing it together, okay? It goes like this.
why don't you and I can play. Okay. Mason, can you help set it up? And then Zoe, you can help clean it up. Got it. Okay, ready, go. together as believers, we can all share the gospel. What do you think? Yeah. If we're united in Christ, you get things done. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Just something I think about. Let's go back to playing some games. Okay, there we go. Happy Sabbath, boys and girls! Hey, this song says he's got the whole world in his hands. Do you know the song? Would you sing with us? Hey, we want to see you singing and doing the motions. So let's join us in worship, okay? This song goes like this. You ready? He's got the whole world. something with maybe your friend, even your parents, or your siblings. Today we are going to be learning about agreeing and disagreeing. So here I have five snack foods and I'm going to be testing them and seeing which one I like more. But first I'm going to call in Melvin. Melvin! Hi kids! And we're going to be testing them together and seeing which ones we agree on and which ones we disagree on. So first, we're going to start with apples. So Melvin, what did you think of the apples? Well, I thought they were kind of sweet, and for the most part, I like them. So would you vote this a yes or a no? A yes. Next, we have grapes. What about you? 
do you like grapes or even apples? So I like grapes, especially the crunchy ones. But Melvin, do you like grapes? No. I would vote it a no. So these are some things that we disagree on. So next is banana. So what do you think, kids? Are bananas really that good? And do you like them? Melvin? I would vote bananas a no. Why? I don't know, I just don't like the, the sweet taste of it. Well, I like bananas, so that's another thing we disagree on. Now we have crackers. So did this one get your vote, Melvin? Yes. Me too. And last but not least, cupcakes. Cupcakes are a definite yes for me, especially because I made them too. But Melvin, what did you think? Um, I thought they were kind of sweet. See, there were three snacks that we disagreed on and two that we both liked. So we learned that even disagreeing is okay. Sometimes disagreeing and agreeing is a good thing. Something, sometimes it's a bad thing. But as Christians, there are things that we should all agree on. The people in Corinth didn't always agree on how the church should be. Paul sent them a letter, which is 1 Corinthians, about what they should agree on. We'll learn more about this today. I hope you enjoyed our snack testing. Bye! Bye. Today, we are going to begin learning about another letter Paul, the missionary, wrote to his Christian friends. A few months ago, we talked about the letters Paul wrote to the church in Thessalonica. In the Bible, we call these letters 1st and 2nd Thessalonians. We learned a lot about how to live God's way from Thessalonians, didn't we? Today, we are going to study Paul's letter to the church at Corinth called First Corinthians. Paul visited the city of Corinth and told many people the good news about Jesus. When these people chose to believe in and follow Jesus, they became the church in Corinth. Then Paul left Corinth to go and tell people at another place about Jesus. A few years later, Paul heard that believers in Corinth were making some wrong choices and needed some good advice. So he wrote them a letter. The problem was, the people who loved and served Jesus couldn't stop arguing. They divided into groups and would not try to listen to each other. They just wanted to be right. Some of the groups liked one preacher more than other groups liked another preacher more. Some of them liked Paul's teaching most. Others liked Peter's teaching most. And others liked a man named Apollo's teaching most. Each group wanted the church to do only the things the preacher they liked the most said for them to do. Many hurtful things happened when everyone was arguing. One group even said that they were the only group that loved Jesus. It was a big mess and the church was in trouble. 
they had made the church about these wonderful teachers instead of about Jesus, and they were about to fall apart. When Paul wrote the, his letter to the church, he urged the Corinthians to love each other and be friends with each other, because they all love Jesus. Their focus needed to be on Jesus, and not the people who taught about him. Paul said to them, Does Jesus divide you up into groups? No. Did I, Paul, die on a cross for you? Of course not. Jesus did that. Christians make up God's church on earth. In order to be united, we need to agree on the main things that the Bible tells us about and leave the rest of the Holy Spirit's work to everyone's heart. Paul reminded the Christians that the church is built on one foundation, Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. The foundation that has already been built is Jesus Christ, and no one can build any other foundation. God has invited people to be a part of his church through Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9. God is faithful. He is the one who has chosen you to share life with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus is the foundation. The only way any of us can know God is through his son, Jesus. God's church has one message, the cross. Jesus died on the cross to break the power of sin and death and make us able to be holy like God. When Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden and brought sin into the world, God promised that he will send his son down to earth to pay for our price that we did and will do that go against God's commands for us. Let's read Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. I will make you and the woman enemies to each other. Your children and her children will be enemies. You will bite her child's foot, but he will crush your head. God's church has a great purpose. Salvation. A lot of churches look very different. They show their love for God in different ways, and that's okay. Every good church that follows Jesus' teachings has one main objective, though, and that's to share the good news of Jesus with other people so that they can be friends with Jesus too. God wants to save all people. God does not want anyone to die, and he's separated from him. But he wants every person to repent of his or her sin and have eternal life in heaven. The Lord is not being slow in doing what he promised, the way some people understand slowness. But God is being patient with you. He does not want anyone to be lost. He wants everyone to change their ways and stop sinning. Even though the church may not agree on everything, we must agree on the most important truths about Jesus. The cross and God's power to serve all who trust in Him. <laughs> Hi kids, this month we are focusing on being thankful in Christ. Today we are thankful to belong to Christ. Not only are all followers of Jesus joined to Him, but all followers of Jesus are also joined to each other. We are all part of God's church. We are joined to others in South Africa, Thailand, Russia, Brazil, Egypt, and all the other countries around the world. All who believe in Jesus and the message of the cross belong to God's church no matter where they live. What a wonderful privilege to be joined to Jesus and be part of his church. We are not on earth to live just for ourselves. All that we do and say should be to please and honor the Lord Jesus. We can give thanks when we think of all he has done for us. Our Bible memory verse today is from Colossians 3.17. We're reading the verse from the International Children's Bible. Let's read the verse together. Everything you say and everything you do should all be done for Jesus, 
your Lord, and in all you do, give thanks to God, the Father, through Jesus. Colossians 3, 17. Now, let's read the verse once again, but in a fun way. I'm going to turn these pumpkins around to reveal our memory verse. And I'm going to need your help and Daniel's help to put them in the right order. Okay, ready? Go! I think you got it. Let's repeat it one more time. Everything you say and everything you do should all be done for Jesus, your Lord, and all you do. Give thanks to God the Father through Jesus. Colossians 3.17 Good job. Hey kids, today we're going to talk some more about Legos. Five rules for kid connections. Get ready! Oh, hey! I'm just reading up on how these things work. Did you know there are rules for Legos? Like, you have to connect them this way. You can't connect Legos this way. And if you try to connect a cracker to a Lego, it won't work. There are rules for Legos. They're not hard, but they're in there. And the same is true for humans. There are some basic rules for connecting. They're not hard, but they're in there. Here's the first rule. Be humble. Do you know what humble means? It means you don't think you're all that. Don't go around bragging all the time. Rule number two, don't be selfish. That one's obvious. When you're selfish, it's just a matter of time until people want to stop hanging around with you. Rule number three, always forgive. People are gonna mess up. Hurt your feelings, say bad stuff make fun of you, you should forgive them and reconnect. Rule number four, tell the truth. Oh, this one's important. Don't lie to people. Nobody likes liars. Nobody wants to hang out with them. And here's the last tip, rule number five. Stay connected to Jesus. That's pretty important, kids. Connecting to Jesus helps us connect to others. Because Jesus is like the ultimate Lego. Memory verse. And because you belong to Jesus, you, you are being built together like a huge Lego creation. Well, hello, boys and girls, moms and dads. I'm so glad we could be together today. The lesson today is about how in the church we should all get along together and we should belong to each other. But it's not always like that, is it? In fact, the Apostle Paul started a church in a city called Ephesus. And he'd gone away, and while he was away, there were two groups of people in the church that weren't always getting along. They didn't trust each other. In fact, they didn't even always like each other. They kind of, the one group stayed with, with their group of people and the other group stayed with their group of people. They were the Jewish Christians who thought they were God's favorites. And because they were God's favorites, God would treat them better. And then there were the Gentile Christians and they thought they were better Christians because they listened to the teachings of Paul and they followed what Paul had to say. And so Paul wrote a letter to them to remind them of three things they had in common. 
three things that if they really understood those three things that was true of both groups, they'd be able to get away from thinking they were favorites or better and really become friends and, and, and work together and, and be united together. What were those three things? Well, the first one is found in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. In the past, your spiritual lives were dead because of your sins and the things you did wrong against God. Yes, in the past, you lived the way the world lives. You followed the ruler of the evil powers. That would be Satan and his angels that are above the earth. That same spirit is now working in those who refuse to obey God. In the past, all of us lived like them. We did all the things our bodies and minds wanted to do. We should have suffered God's anger because of the way we were. We were the same as all other people. In other words, what Paul's saying is we are all sinners. So I want to ask you a question. What is sin? And probably most of you start giving the answer such as lying or not obeying our parents or cheating in a game or maybe being mean and bullying someone. And those are sins. But let me ask you a question. Why do we commit sins? Well, let me illustrate it. <coughs> Suppose I have a cold and I cough and I sneeze <clears throat> and I have a sore throat. Do I cough and sneeze and have a sore throat because I have a cold? Or do I have a cold because I cough and sneeze and have a sore throat? Doctors tell us that we cough and sneeze and have a sore throat because we have a cold. The cold is the real problem. And we have a cold because there's some bad germs deep inside of us, inside our bodies, that need to get out and, and, and need, the body needs to get rid of. And coughing and sneezing and having a sore throat are strange ways, but they kind of help us get rid of those bad germs. And so we commit sins because we are sinners. We're selfish. And we are born selfish. That's why your parents had to teach you how to share. And, and they had to teach you how to treat others well. So the first thing we have in common is that we are sinners. We are born selfish, and that keeps us apart from God. I want you to think about if you had a mountain on one side and a big mountain on the other, and it was a straight straight uh, cliff on both sides, and there was a big valley, and you had two cities on either side or two people, how would you get across? Well, you might be able to climb down that steep cliff, but you probably wouldn't make it. You could die. You would have to have a bridge across so that you could cross safely. And Jesus became the bridge between us and God. Notice what it says in Ephesians 2, verses 4 and 5. But God's mercy is great, and he loved us very much. We are spiritually dead because of the things we did wrong against God. But God gave us new life with Jesus. You have been saved by God's grace. What is God's grace? It is God's power at work within us. Through his grace, we are forgiven. Through his grace, we are connected back with God. Through his grace, we are, even though we deserve punishment for our sins, God treats us as if we'd never sinned because Jesus lived a perfect life and he died for you and for me. And so the second thing we have in common is that Jesus gives us grace. What is the third thing? Notice what it says in Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9. I mean that you have been saved by grace because you believe or trust God. You did not save yourselves. It was a gift from God. You cannot brag that you are saved by the good things that you have done. We all receive the same gift. God doesn't have favorites. I'm not a better Christian than someone else because of what I do or even because of what I believe. I'm a, we're all good Christians because we trust in Jesus and what he has done. Those are the three things we have in common. We can't save ourselves. And what is the result? Paul writes about it in Ephesians chapter two, verses 13 and 14. Yes, at one time you were far away from God, but now 
in Jesus. You have brought, been brought near to God through the blood of Jesus' death because he died for us. Because of Jesus, we now have peace. Jesus made both Jewish Christians, who thought they were favorites, and non-Jews, those who thought they were better, he made them one people. They were separated as if there was a wall between them, but Jesus broke down that wall of hate by giving up his own body. What Paul is trying to tell us and remind us is that all of us, regardless of who we are, regardless of whether we're black or, or white, whether we're, we're young or old, all of us are sinners. All of us are given mercy and grace as a gift from God. And because of that, God brings us together into his body, the church. And we can look at each other and we can know that we're all God's children. And because we belong to God, we belong to each other, just like you belong to your mom and your dad and your family. We are a church family and we belong to each other. I hope that helps explain to you why we can be united even though we're different. We can be united because of what Jesus has done for you and what Jesus has done for me. Welcome to today's edition of Really Good News. Today we report to you on the good news of being part of the best family ever. Of course you all think that the family you are now a part of, like your mom and dad, brothers and sisters, grandparents, aunts and uncles, is the best family. And that's true. But the Bible tells us that we all can belong to a particular family that is the very best family to be a part of. We didn't invited a few guests to help us tell about this. First, we go to the Brown family. Hello, Hello everyone. everyone. We are here to tell you that as believers in Jesus, we are now part of his family. We are connected to him and he is a part of us. We, that includes you, are joined to Jesus the same way branches are joined to a tree. John 15, 5 in the International Children's Bible says, I am the vine and you are the branches. If a person remains in me and I in him, then he produced much fruit, but without me, he can do nothing. Did you know that Jesus died for our sins so we can be friends with him? Thank you, Brown family. It's great to know that being a part of God's family means that he will be producing some great things in us that reflect God's love with one another. Let's go to another guest, Stefania from Riverside, California. Stefania? Hello, Gabby and Alan. I would like to read John 1, 12 from the International Children's Bible. It says, But some people did not accept him. They believed in him. To them, he gave the right to become children of God. This says that we are adopted into God's family. And the great God who created the universe wants you to be a part of his family too. All those who believe in Jesus and receive him become a son or daughter of God. Isn't that a wonderful privilege? That is a great privilege. Thank you for sharing that with us, Stefania. And now, our next guests come from Eastville, California. They are the Castaneda family. Hello everyone, we bring you a special verse from the Bible from 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. It says, but if we confess our sins, he will forgive our sins. We can uh, trust God. He does what is right. He will make us clean from all the wrongs we have done. So how do you feel when you sin? You know, when you choose not to follow God's commands of loving Him and loving others. Pretty bad. Me too. Even if we try really hard, we will never stop sinning. 
How do we get rid of all of our sin? When we are joined to Jesus, he takes it all away and makes us completely clean. When God sees us, he sees us as if we have never sinned. That's really great. So being a part of God's family means being in a family where all of my brothers and sisters in Christ are seen the same way that God sees me. This really helps me to see others through God's eyes as being equally valuable. Our next guest is Olivia from Riverside, California. Olivia? Hello, and thank you for having us on your news program. I would like to read Ephesians 2.13 to you all. It says this, Yes, at one time you were far away from God, but now, in Christ Jesus, you were brought near to God through the blood of Christ's death. Friends, I am near to God because of Jesus. God is completely holy, and we are completely sinful. There is no sin in heaven. How could we ever hope to be close to God? Well, it is because of what Jesus did on the cross that we can be close to God. When Jesus died on the cross, he took the punishment for all the things that we have done and will do that go against God which should have been ours. Thank you, Olivia. It's amazing to see that God has chosen us to be part of his family, even though we are sinners. Our next guests are the Bartholomew family from Corona, California. Thanks for sharing with us this morning. Hi, it's our pleasure. We love talking about being a part of God's family. Right now, Bradley has a Bible verse to share with us. Ephesians 2, 19 through 22. It says this. So now you non-Jews are not visitors or strangers. Now you are citizens together with God's holy people. You belong to God's family. You believers are like a building that God owns. That building was built on the foundation of the opposed opposed apostles and prophets. Christ Jesus himself is the most important stone in that building. That whole building is joined together in Christ, and Christ makes it grow and become a holy temple in the Lord. And in Christ you, too, are being built together with the Jews. You are being built into a place where God lives through the Spirit. I am part of God's church, so is my family. The wonderful thing is, everyone who believes in Jesus and what he did on the cross is joined to Jesus. And everyone who believes in Jesus and what he did on the cross is also joined together. Together we make the church, we make the body of God. It's so wonderful. And the Holy Spirit is living in each one of us. That is really great. Thank you for sharing. Our last guests come from Corona, California. They are the Girola family. Greetings, everyone. We are here to share with you a passage from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. It says this, But in all these things, we have full victory through God, who showed his love for us. Yes, I am sure that nothing can separate us from the love God has for us. Not death, not life, not angels, not ruling spirits, nothing now, nothing in the future, no powers, nothing above us, nothing below us, or anything else in the whole world will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God loves us. And God loves you. Nothing you could ever do, no matter how terrible, could ever cause God to stop loving you. He loves you every minute of every day. Even when you aren't thinking about Him, He is still thinking over you. Even when you sin, He still loves you. Even when bad things happen, He is still watching over you and caring for you. We can only be in Christ because of Him. We, the Garola family, are blessed to be in Christ's family. And we hope you are too. We are definitely happy to be part of God's family, that's for sure. Being in God's family is the best family there is. And that's really good news. Bye. Getting 
along with other believers, it's really important. For one, it shows others around us that we are unified in who we place our faith in. People will be more interested in listening to what God wants to share with them and we'll have the privilege of being used by the Holy Spirit to invite them to get to know their Creator, their Redeemer, and their friend. Remember our Bible verse, write it down, and study it every day this week until you have it tucked away up here. Let's read it now. Everything you say and everything you do should all be done for Jesus your Lord. And in all you do, Give thanks to God the Father through Jesus. We all come from different families, different countries, different states, even different churches. We all have differences. But as believers in Jesus, we're now unified in Christ Jesus in our understanding of the gospel. This is the good news, the news that Paul also was called by God to share. For God so loved the world he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. No matter who you are, what your status is, where you're from, or what you've accomplished, it's whose you are that really matters. A child of the kingdom, because of what the King of Kings has done for you. And now being unified in this, we are to love one another as brothers and sisters, unified in Christ, and then share the King of Kings with others. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for showing us what it means to be unified in Christ, to be together in agreement with the message of the cross, with the, with the resurrection, and with the, the coming again and taking us to heaven so that we can all have eternal life. Lord, we thank you for including us into your kingdom. Help us to remember to stay focused on you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, that's our service for today. I hope you'll join us again next Sabbath. Until then, have a great week. Stay safe. Bye-bye.